So these are the answers to the pretest for Geology 110, fall of 2022. So sample number one here, this is the mineral fluorite. It has cleavage. It often forms these nice little octahedrons. Comes in many colors, tans, I mean whites, actually kind of clear. It'll be often pink, purple, blue, kind of a green color. This is the blue, almost like a turquoise color, and this has more of the purple in it. And so that's fluorite. Number two reacts a hydrochloric acid. This has 6120 cleavage. And this is calcite. Really important uh, rock forming mineral for sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. One of the primary minerals found in marble is calcite. Number three, a very hard mineral. Kind of like a milky color. It's basically glass. It's nature's glass. It's quartz. And this particular sample of quartz would be either called crystalline quartz. So number three is quartz. Hardness of seven. Easily scratches glass. Number four. It's cubic. Has good cleavage. Almost uh, like translucent. Salty taste, so this is the mineral halite. If you look at a salt tablet, or basically if you look at a salt shaker and take the uh, salt grains out, they're very small microscopic versions of this piece of uh, halite here. Number five, often referred to as fool's gold. This one actually has pyrite or hedrons. They're like a dodectahedron but pyrohedron. The composition of this mineral is iron and sulfur. Very heavy, high specific gravity. And this is the mineral pyrite. People call it fool's gold, but it's actually pyrite. Number six, a really important rock forming mineral. Important for making microchips. Very soft mineral. Has flakes off in thin sheets. Has basal cleavage. This is muscovite. So number six is muscovite. And it has a cousin, another mineral, that same physical properties, very soft, flaky, but it's black in color and that's called biotite. Of all the minerals that we deal with, this one's a metallic mineral. It has cubic cleavage, pretty shiny silvery luster. Very high specific gravity, the highest specific gravity of any mineral. This is galena. So number seven is galena. Going over here to number eight. This is a mineral that writes easily on paper. So people have actually written on the uh, paper here. Kind of a greasy feel to it. Pure carbon. And this is graphite. This is what we find in pencils. Not lead. We find graphite in pencils like this pencil here has graphite in it. Number nine, again, another very important rock forming mineral. This is potassium feldspar, also known as case bar. Has really good cleavage. It has lines on the top, but they're not striations. Plagioclase has striations. And number 10, really important uh, ore probably one of the most major components of our planet. Very high in iron and magnetic. So it's the only mineral that will stick to a magnet. And so therefore we call this mineral magnetite. Some people call this lodestone, meaning that it's loaded with iron. So number 10, magnetite. All right, so we're done with minerals and we're going to igneous rocks. And this first igneous rock here, number 11, very glassy texture to it, very vitreous luster. And this is brown obsidian. There's also some smaller 
black parts in it. That's the black obsidian. So obsidian can be black, it can be brown, or a mixture of the black and the brown. Their snowflake obsidian has white little flakes in it. And then often when the black and the brown come together, it'll come together in swirls and they'll call that mahogany obsidian. So that's number 11, mahogany obsidian. Number 12, this is what comes out of a volcano. This is the ejected material. This is what we call a pyroclastic or a tuff. So the texture of this rock is pyroclastic. The name of it is volcanic tuff. You can actually see little shards of obsidian in this rock and fragments of other rock. So this is all the ejected material out of very explosive volcanoes like Mount St. Helens. Number 13, this is a felsic rock. It's phaneritic in that all the grains are of equal size. This basically consists of shiny material, which is muscovite. It also has quartz in it, white plagioclase. This is just a plain granite. It's number 13, it's just a plain granite. Number 14 is also a granite, but a slightly different texture to it. This is what we call porphyritic, which means that not all the minerals are the same size. So in this case, the pink potassium felspar mineral here is larger than the quartz, the plagioclase, and the biotites. So those all the minerals are pretty much the same size, but then you got this, these very large pink minerals, these potassium felspars. And so this we call a porphyritic granite. Number 15. This rock, half black, half right, white, aphanitic texture, or I mean phaneric texture, get the textures right there. This rock consists of two minerals, uh, plagioclase and ampoule, and this is a diorite, also known as like the 50-50 rock. So this rock, its composition, the dark mineral, the ampoule, is mafic. The white mineral, the plagioclase, is felsic. So this is right at an intermediate rock. This is where two magmas mixed a felsic magma and a very iron-rich magma, a mafic magma. And this basically is diorite. i repeat here, but just to show that this is a common rock that we actually make countertops out of. And this has a flat polished surface. Again, this is a porphyritic basalt. Porphyritic because the larger plagioclase crystals, pretty apparent just how large these plagioclase crystals are, in comparison with the quartz and the mica mineral, the biotite in this case. And so this is another porphyritic granite, number 16. Gonna go down across the room now. Continue with the igneous rocks. And we now go to number 17. So 17 is a very dark mafic rock. It's extrusive. This is basalt. Or some people call this scoria vesicular basalt. So it is a basalt, but because it has the air holes in it, we have to give it a little bit deeper definition, more specific. And in this case, we would call this vesicular basalt or scoria. So vesicular basalt or scoria, very black rock, very mafic. And then this rock here, number 18, light gray color, is really full of really fine, fine holes. These are air holes. This is actually glassy texture. So this is glassy, but the technical term for this particular rock, its texture is frothy. And this is pumice. This rock actually is extremely lightweight and floats on water. Number 19. This rock has an aphanitic background, but it has a very large mineral, a phenocryst. And because it has these larger black minerals, these black, larger black minerals are ampoule. Therefore, the name of this rock is porphyritic basalt. And it's called porphyry or porphyritic because of the large phenocryst amphibole crystals. 
Then the last igneous rock. This is the rock that has the largest minerals. This rock is extremely felsic. It's very quartz rich. And this is a pegmatite. So pegmatites generally have very large minerals. So you can see that this pegmatite here consists of very large muscovite crystals. And then the rest of this rock is basically ampoples, or not ampoples, but uh, plagioclases, light color plagioclase. And this is a pegmatite. So we're done with the igneous, and now we're going to move on to metamorphic rocks. So number 21 here, this rock reacts to acid, and this rock is probably about 98% broken seashells that have all been kind of cemented back together. So this rock is called a coquina. It's not a phosphoriferous limestone. Phosphoriferous limestones are mostly limestone rocks with some fossils. This is like 98% broken seashells. So these are shell fragments. They've been kind of glued back together by nature, and this is called coquina. Rock number 22. The texture of this is going to be clastic. That means it's going to be a sedimentary rock comprised of particles of other rocks. And in this case, the grain size of this is going to be sand. And the sand is actually quartz sand. So we would call this rock a quartz sandstone. So it's just a white quartz sandstone. And we just call it a quartz sandstone. Moving on to number 23. This is what we call a chemical rock. This is formed in a water-rich environment. It does react to acid. Its primary base for its chemistry is calcite. So this rock is a limestone. You put acid on it and it'll fizz. But in addition to being a limestone, this rock has very noticeable fossils. So we call this phosphoriferous limestone. If it did not have fossils, we would just call it a limestone. Limestones are basically, don't have any grain size to them, they're chemical, and they react to acid. Number 24, this is another classic sedimentary rock, fragments of other rocks. In this case, the grain size is sand, and it has a red color. So it's a sandstone, but because it has this red color, the red color is due to iron oxide, and that oxidation of iron we refer to as hematite, so we call this rock a hematitic sandstone. Number 25. This is a rock, clastic, consisting of gravel-sized fragments. And these gravel-sized fragments are pretty much angular, they're square. So this is a bunch of square gravel, angular gravel fragments cemented together, and this we call a breccia. Close to a breccia, but more rounded grains, is number 26. And number 26, a little bit coarser, a little bit bigger, this is what we call a conglomerate, because here the gravel-sized fragments are rounded. All rounded gravel fragments cemented together. We call that a conglomerate. And then of all the classic rocks, the rock with the finest grain size, clay size minerals, these rocks are often referred to as claystone, mudstone, siltstones. They're all basically in the category of shale. So for this class, we're going to call this shale. Um, basically, mudstones, uh, claystones tend to be smooth. Um, siltstones tend to be gritty. These rocks often do have fossils. So the peat shell, which contains Olinello's family of trilobites, is a shell unit that will often contain fossils. And then 28 is a biochemical rock. So this has organic carbon in it. It's lightweight, often layered. It burns. And this is what we call bituminous coal. 
So bituminous coal, when it's metamorphosed, it turns into anthracite coal. Anthracite coal basically loses all of the uh, sulfates and the biological components, and at that point, it's almost pure carbon. But this rock has organic carbon. There's still basically dead plant and biological material in that coal. Number 29, this is a chemical rock formed in water. And this rock basically consists of little square crystallines of halite. So we don't call this halite because this is the impure form. This has some clay and some dirt mixed in with it. So we call this rock salt. And it's a chemical rock. So that's rock salt. And then the last of the sedimentary rocks is a repeat. This one's just a little bit more coarser grain. So this is basically a quartz sandstone. And sandstones come in many colors. This one's just kind of a grayish, kind of a quartz sandstone. Probably formed in a beach environment because it's not as pure and clean as a good quartz sandstone. So there's a little bit of clay in this one. It's probably a beach environment. And now we go to the last group of rocks called the metamorphic rocks. So metamorphic rocks are rocks, other rocks that have been subject to heat and pressure. And so the parent of this particular rock here was a shale. That shell was subject to metamorphism, and this rock actually became baked. And in that baking process, it almost kind of solidified it. It made it more compact. So this is a slate. Slates have no visible minerals. They're foliated because they have layers to them. So anytime you see a rock that has layers to it, that's called foliation. So this rock is a slate. Dull, no visible minerals. Number 32 is very similar to a slate, except this rock has just a slight shine to it, and that makes it a phyllite. Again, no visible minerals. The composition of 31 and 32 basically is clay minerals. These are low-grade metamorphic rocks, very compact. Definitely layered, which is what we call foliation. Slight shine to this one. This rock is a phyllite. Moving across the room to finish up the metamorphic sequence. Rock number 33. This reacts to acid. It definitely has visible minerals of calcite. So this is non-foliated. This does not have a layering to it at all. Basically, these are just interlocking, intergrowing calcite crystals. And so this rock is a marble. And its parent is a limestone. Okay. 34. This rock has visible minerals in it. It is foliated. It's layered. Comprised mostly of mica minerals. Often this rock may have garnets. So number 34 is a schist. Layered minerals. We can actually see the visible minerals. So this is pr pretty high grade metamorphism. And over here we have another schist, number 35. This is a green schist. And it's called green schist because it's a green color. So this rock definitely does has, have a layering look to it. It is layered, foliated. The green color is due to chlorite mica. And this is a green schist. Number 36. This rock here is comprised of quartz. Its parent was a quartz sandstone. And because it's comprised of quartz, it will scratch glass. It will not react to acid. And this is a quartz site. So quartz sandstones, when they're metamorphosed, they form 
a metamorphic rock called, called quartzite. Number 37, this is the highest grade of metamorphism. This particular rock is a gneiss. And the reason we call it a gneiss is it definitely has foliation, has layers of pink ampoule and black, I mean pink potassium feldspar and black ampoule. And this is foliated. So you can see the layering of this rock, the striping. And so this is the highest grade of metamorphism, and this is a nice. You can take a conglomerate or a breccia, metamorphose those, some are 38. This is a metaconglomerate. So this is basically a conglomerate or a breccia where the fragments have all been subject to heat and fused together. And so we take a conglomerate that was sedimentary, we subject it to heat and pressure, and we form a meta-conglomerate. Number 39. This rock is foliated. It's in the schist family, and is comprised of all ampoule minerals, black ampoule. So its parent was a basalt or a gabbro. They consider this foliated there's layering and alignment of the black ampoule minerals. And so this rock, because it's comprised mostly of ampoule, we call it amphibolite. And our last of our rock sequence, number 40, metamorphic. Its parent was bituminous coal. This is anthracite coal. It looks a lot like obsidian. The dead giveaway is the specific gravity. This is very light. It is very vitreous luster. It looks almost like glass, but it's just to the point where this is almost pure carbon. If you put this in enough heat and pressure, it would actually form a diamond. And so this is anthracite coal. And that concludes our rock, or actually our mineral and our rock review. So on the test, we'll have the same setup. We'll have 40 samples. We'll have 10 minerals, 10 igneous rocks, 10 sedimentary rocks, and 10 metamorphic rocks. And that concludes this video.